There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac, and I am here with two of my BookTube besties, uh, Not and Skell. Uh, <laughs> Nell and Scott of uh, Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. Hello, Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hello, book the Sean Maniac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. We're into our cups as usual. This is a thing that we do on occasion. And recently, Scott and Nell put up a video where I had given them, fed them first lines from books that I checked on Goodreads that they had read. And we did the first line challenge, but there was no reciprocation. So I'm needing some gratification here. So now the tables are turned and they're going to reciprocate. He's already tried to cheat once. So let's <laughs> see if we can keep him honest. I, I'm Canadian. I have a national reputation to maintain. <laughs> I didn't know that that was a stereotype. I think that the first book might be a little bit easy, but oh, let's go you're, anyway. You're overestimating me. <laughs> Whether or no she, whom you are to forgive, if you can, did or did not belong to the upper 10,000 of this, our English world, I am not prepared to say with any strength of affirmation. Oh, boy. Can you read it again a little more slowly? Sure, yeah. Whether or no she, whom you are to forgive, if you can, did or did not belong to the upper 10,000 of this, our English world, I am not prepared to say with any strength of affirmation. Oh, that helped a lot because I didn't hear the word forgive. But yes, that one is fairly easy. Can You Forgive Her by Anthony Trollope. It is. It is. It's my favourite Trollope, I think. Have you read it? I have not read I have not read uh, Can You Forgive Her. I have not had a- audio books. You have to get the audio book that's narrated by. I did it as an audio text combo. He does all the trollops. So you probably will. It'll be the first, first one that comes up. Let's see. I'll put it in text for you. I can't, I can't remember his name, but yeah, fantastic. Okay. So one for one. One for one. And when but you read it first, I didn't hear forgive. So I'm going, what, what, what? <laughs> so is this my... Yeah, I'll give I've picked the first book. You can pick oh, I can have a the second one. It's got the review date down the right. Oh, I can decide how mean to be. Yeah, I picked five oh, years. And I, was, I was going back into your prehistoric reading archive, so I've sorted it by a star rating. So these are all five star reads. Ho, ho. <laughs> Told you. Found it. I wasn't looking, so. It's all right. He passed it to me like a sneaky drug deal. Yeah, yeah. If there were cops around, I would be spread eagled and against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and not in the fun way. I'm sure the gesture came naturally to you. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. And there is a lovely road that runs from Ixapo into the hills. Ixapo. Did you just steal my drink? No, it's fine. There's a lovely road that runs from Ixapo into the hills. I'm just going to guess because that sounds vaguely like an African uh, place name that um, it might be the canonical African novel uh, Things Fall Apart by Chinwa Achebe. No. Then I have no idea. Can I have the second sentence, please? Yes. The hills are grass-covered and rolling, and they are lovely beyond any singing of it. Beyond any singing of it. Now, that sounds very familiar. That's a beautiful sentence that rings some bells. I'll give you a clue to say that. Oh, look at my notes. You were on the right track. I was on the right track. Okay, so it's uh, probably an African novel. Um, What about... uh, Weep Not Child by Ingugi Wationggo. I think um, I think Scott's done you a disservice because led me astray. It is an African novel, but it's written by a white man. Oh, okay. Well, then this is will not count as the correct answer, but it must be the South African novel. Um, oh, what the hell's it called? I've read it at least twice. Um, 
the author in the title is going to my head, but I think I know it's a South African novel. It was made into a movie starring Sidney Poitier. Was it? If it's if, it, if I've got the right South African novel written by a white guy. If it guy, was, I'm going to watch that movie. Published about 1940. Yeah, that's about when it was published. What the hell is it called? It's got, isn't that a question? The title is in the form of a question? No. no. Okay, I give up. Please tell me. It, it is a movie. It is called Cry the Beloved Country. Cry the Beloved Henry. Country. It's not a question. I can see my copy is mutilated. I'm... I love that novel so much, but I haven't, and I haven't read it for years and years, but that, that is a beautiful opening, isn't it? Have it is beautiful. It? I've read it several times. I can is... tell by your copy, yeah. I, I think it was a first year uni book for me. It was for me, or maybe even high school. Maybe even high school. I can't actually quite remember, but... Um, there's post-it notes there's all the, through uh, now. You can version. see, like, all oh my notes. There's one, that if you're into rereading it, that that would be a really interesting reread. It's been, I, I think I'm... I think it's been at least a decade since I've read it and, and well, my ideas fun. about race are so different now. I would be very interested to read this. Me too, and it's been much longer. But, yes, I do remember because I went through a, a phase of being really obsessed with Sidney Poitier, and so I read his biography, and when he, he was, as a very young actor, I think the movie came out in about 1950, he went to <laughs> South Africa and he played one of the lead roles and... The race laws being what they were in South Africa in 1950. Yeah. To get into the country to work was to be indentured to the white film director. Wow. Talk about trust. Yeah. So I have seen the movie. I don't remember if it's a good movie or not, but he's amazing. I will be I will be watching that. Yeah. Because that seems like, that's a killer backstory, if nothing else. That's right. Respect for his art to do that. Mm. And he was a very young man at the time. You know, it was one of his very first films by the Bill of the Country. How old is Sidney Poitier? He, I think he mustn't be very well because he hasn't made... Not, I'm not aware of any public appearances in about 10 years. He's 94. His birthday is the day before mine. You're a February 21st b- baby? That's me. Same as Nina Simone. Oh, geez. Oh. Nina and Sydney and now. Yeah. Cool. Cool Sydney. time of year to be born. Wow. Mississippi, goddamn. Yeah, <laughs> good song. What's the next book you're going to pick up now? Um, oh, I'm unsure. I think Tipping the Velvet maybe. Oh, there's a lot on my radar. Um, there's, I think I've got about 10 on my bedside table that I've... I, you know. This is a rather mythic bedside table. It is. <laughs> it is. I grabbed a clip from your video about that to put on my channel, yeah. I'm reading The Amateur at the moment. Have you read that? No, I don't even know about it. It's a memoir about um, the first trans man to box I saw you were reading it I'd forgotten the title I mean, I know I've heard quite a bit about it yeah yeah so he boxed at um, Madison Square Garden but see I thought that he was a trans man who happened to be a boxer but that's not the story the story is um he's a trans man and a journalist and decided to do a boxing match for sort of the experience of it and to so write a book about it write a book about it oh okay yeah that makes it a little so, bit less appealing but yeah um but it is very interesting because it is his sort of exploration about toxic masculinity and um how quickly he's fallen into some of the patterns of toxic masculinity since his transition and and exploring the kind of man he wants to be, I guess, in a really, like, violent environment. So it's interesting so far. It all sounds interesting. All right, are we ready to go? Mm -hmm. Sure. Men can do nothing without the make-believe of a beginning. Mm, I love the line, but it doesn't sound the slightest bit familiar. Men can do nothing without the make-believe of 
A beginning. A beginning. Beginning. Yeah. Second sentence, please. Second sentence. Even science, the strict measure, is obligated to start with a make-believe unit and must fix on a point in the star's unceasing journey when his side, sorry, when his sidereal clock shall pretend that the time is at naught. Oh my God. This is the, a really wild guess and I'm probably not going to be able to remember, but it's just, there's something in that second sentence that was sounded vaguely nautical, so I'm thinking ships. And so the only thing that's coming to me is one of the, uh, the homoerotic novel, Billy Budd by Melville. Um, it's not Billy Budd by Melville. But and then I completely give up. I have no idea. I didn't know that Billy that that Melville wrote more than one homoerotic novel at sea. <laughs> uh, if we look at a list of the non-homoerotic novels by Melville, it's very short. <laughs> so, so, uh, I mean, if that's your thing, then I suspect you're going to spend. Oh, there's one more sentence now. Oh, okay. <laughs> You well, I don't think it's going to help me, but sure, let's. Why not? I'll, I'll give you a clue. If you don't like this book, if you bag this book, you're going to jeopardize a friendship with one of your book two besties not here. Ooh. Mm. What's the last sentence? Um, his less accurate grandmother po- poetry. Sorry, let me. His less accurate grandmother. The poetry has always been understood to start in the middle, but on a reflection, it appears that her proceeding is not very different to his, since science too reckons backwards as well as forwards, divides his units into billions, and with his clock fingers at naught, really sets off in media's res. What the fog is apparently I've read it. Did I like it? What was my I'm I'm done guessing, but what was my star rating? Four. Okay, and it, it's one of my book two besties' favorite books. Um, his favorite authors, favorite probably. Authors. Favorite. Yeah. I would say, say, knowing that this booktuber's love of this author, it would have to be one of her favorite books too. And it's a her. It's yeah, a her. Oh, no idea. Uh, it's Daniel Deronda. Oh, well, I got. I read that. I read that thirty. 30- years ago oh really oh sorry <laughs> oh it's okay it's okay but yeah I, I, just the old like memory george, it does sound like george Eliot very much and i i did it for it wasn't grad school but it was my uh, undergrad course and uh, yeah that was a pretty incredible novel but i have no memory of the opening <laughs> <laughs> i think it was 1991 or two or something well i, I read it two years ago and i don't remember the opening <laughs> sentence <laughs> The 90s are not 30 years ago. That's that's fiction. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like some Trumpian logic there. Mm. It's working you know, for me. Well, sometimes you just got to be in well, denial about it. Exactly very long how. before it'll be 40 years ago. So. Shh. You ready? Mm. I stand at the window of this great house in the south of France as night falls, the night which is leading me to the most terrible morning of my life. The south of France. And I like this book? Yes. Okay. I would say so. That's completely drawing a blank, so can I have the second sentence, please? You can. I have a drink in my hand. There is a bottle at my elbow. <laughs> that, that seems like it's very useful. meta. <laughs> very. Should we go straight right. for the third? I'll give you the third sentence. I watch my reflection in the darkening gleam of the window pane. Yeah, I have no idea. Not the foggiest. Well, it's famously set in France and it's a gay novel. Is it by a French writer? I mean, I'm I'm not going to count it if I get if I guess it at this point. But... No, not by a French writer. No clue. It's Giovanni's James room, James Baldwin. Oh yeah, I read that even earlier. I read that in the in the late eighties. So I have no I think... memory of it whatsoever. But I should have clued in just from the fact that it was not by. Yeah, I remember you guys put off "Swimming in the Dark" by Jodorowsky. 
Mm. I think you read this one. So have you read this one now? No, I've literally, I, I've, it's, I've dog, dog in my page. I'm that far in. She started it this morning. Okay, well, I, I'd love to reread it. I bought a copy to reread it, and then I hope that you will read Swimming in the Dark because it was... I, and that is why I got this in order to read Swimming in the Dark. Jen, the librarian, raved about that yeah. Swimming in the Dark so much that it was very high on my list. And then Scott read it and said, read Giovanni's Room first. So, and I'm terrible at taking instructions. So I've taken 12 months to do as I'm told. <laughs> really heavily referenced Giovanni's Room, which was a problem because I read Swimming in the Dark and then I read Giovanni's Room. Yeah. Um, and I just... And that's uh, interesting because it, to me, my very dim, almost non-existent memory of Giovanni's Room didn't detract from my from my love for... Mm. So some people need need that more than others, maybe. I don't know. I definitely like... I like to do that when... Yeah, um, no, I do too, but... Yeah. I, and maybe after I reread Giovanni's Room, I'll go back and reread, reread Swimming in the Dark. I feel like queer, queer male fiction is going through a rejuvenation because in the 90s, uh, the last 20, 30 years, it's been just crap and suddenly it's coming back. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Swimming in the Dark, Shaggy Bane, a whole bunch mm -hmm. of the prettiest star. Prettiest star. Huh. Have you read any Marlon James? Is he not somebody you like, or is he somebody you? Mm, Marlon James. Is that the the guy who wrote um, the assassination of whatever? Brief history of seven killings. Yeah, that one. Yeah. I'm interested in him, but I'm not interested in reading his books. <laughs> That's exactly Does that make sense. Like I have no interest in Black Leopard, Red Wolf. It's some fantasy. Oh no, that's rubbish. Oh, thank you. Um, um, a brief history of seven killings. I, I might try it at some point, but I've heard so many things that make me think it's not going to be a Sean book that it's probably lowest on the on the list. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's because if I could like edit it, I would take out like eighty percent of the book, and then the last twenty percent is all short. Like. But there's 80% of other stuff. Uh, just basically gratuitous Shit. violence that you don't really need that's kind of fun, but a bit. Did you say the last 20% is all Sean? Yeah, yeah, yeah there's 20%. Okay. So I shouldn't bail until I should... until the last 20%. Oh, no, no. Now that's I a challenge. On page 500 and keep going. <laughs> Was that, I must be getting a little tipsy, was it with you in this conversation or was, or was it in an earlier Zoom chat I've had today about, uh, there's a part of me that just kind of wishes that you could stop reading a book at a certain point and that would be the end of it and then it would be like a four or a five star read, but but the, when no, you- No, that wasn't with us, but I understand what you mean. You know what I mean? Sometimes they just ruin it. They do. Like, um... The novel that I just saw you review before we came on, um, where she's crawling up the stairs and in a short skirt and it's a pink background. That's a gen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the one that makes me think of testicles. Four <laughs> until well, about 30 pages to the from the end. That's why I'm such a big fan of Elizabeth Gaskell's last novel. Wives and daughters. Problem. Wives and daughters, because she died before she could write the last chapter, and so it ends in kind of a modern way. Oh. It doesn't wrap things up the way a Victorian novel usually does, and I think it's perfect. I love the ending of that novel because just <laughs> finish. <laughs> oh, funny. Yeah, yeah. So we just need to travel back in time and knock them all off before they write that last chapter, or just. Rip it out. We just need to get advice from our book two friends who we really trust about which pages to rip out before we start reading it. Maybe that's... Oh, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I trust any of you that much. This, well, I was going to say this from somebody who dog ears their books. Oof. I am criminal with my books. They get abused. Yeah. You should be in book jail. <laughs> that's, as long as his book's there. I don't looks way too excited when he said that. Yeah. <laughs> Send her away from me. No, no, I think you wanted to be in there with you. 
<laughs> <laughs> just, I just believe you should be punished for your treatment of books. <laughs> he says, like, he would be any better. But... No, I, I'm terrible too. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm terrible because I'm careless. You're terrible deliberately. Yeah. All right, I have the next book. Edith, said Margaret gently, Edith. It's not very helpful. <laughs> That's me. Edith is a very um, memorable protagonist's name. Edith, said Margaret gently, Edith. I, have a, I had a great aunt named Edith. Isn't that fascinating? Edith and Roy? <laughs> Are they uh, related? Edith and Roy? No, because, wow, yeah, no, other side of the, the maternal. Great other habit. side of the family tree? Mm. We'll have it all mapped out one day. Yeah. <laughs> I have enough Sean stories and I'll be able to map out. Sean's family way. tree, yeah. <laughs> um, she, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need, so Edith and Margaret. Okay, second sentence, please. I'm not sure this is gonna be much more helpful, but, but as Margaret half suspected, Edith had fallen asleep. I love those opening sentences. It's interesting. I, I want like to read the book. Is. Apparently, I have read the book, and presumably, I like this book. Yeah, I I think you did. Um, and it sounds like it's certainly not modern. I would be shocked if um, any modern novel, like in the last thirty years, had a protagonist named Edith. Um, so I'm going to guess it's nineteenth or before nineteen fifty. Um, and I, yeah, I give up. I have no idea. You're correct in your assumption. Mm. She lay curled up on the sofa uh, in the black drawing room in Hartley Street, looking very lonely in her white muslin and blue ribbon. Okay, you know what? I think I think it wasn't really anything in that third sentence as much as something just clicked in my brain. Is it the E.M. Forrester novel Howard's End? It's not. Okay, then yeah, I have no idea. I give up totally. I... We have discussed this author tonight in the Zoom chat. Probably. Yeah. It's North and South. By Elizabeth Gaskell. Okay. Yeah. I read that less than 10 years ago, maybe <laughs> six years ago. Liked it. I, um, I was looking at your read list and you said, that's why I like Elizabeth Gaskell. And she was right there. And I'm like, well, let's. <laughs> yeah, I read. I went through a stage before I really got my reading mojo back where I um, had a lot of commutes with work and a lot of uh, waiting time in between classes that I was teaching at this university or that university in Tokyo. And I got on to three eBooks of the classics that I could get from Apple Books. I think it was called iBooks at the time. And I had, a, I had an iPhone and I read a, a whole swack of Victorian literature that way on my iPhone, on the train, on the bus, or in between, you know, sitting in Tokyo University grounds, smoking my brains out and reading, and I read North and South. You know, my first Elizabeth Gaskell, anything I'd read. I quite liked it, but I don't remember. It. Have you read North and South? I have. I really liked North and South. I read it for Victoria last year, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm deeply offended that you've read The Da Vinci Code. You have obviously haven't heard me discuss that trauma. <laughs> <laughs> whenever um, I whenever I deign to mention it, I, I use the same uh, sentence every time. It was an all time low in a lifetime of reading. <laughs> <laughs> Did it for a book club in Vancouver about. Did years. you then divorce all of the people in the book club and never speak to them again? Pretty much. Maybe this will be the last one. Yeah. If you go to that tab. How many have I got right? Only one, right? Yeah. <laughs> You've gotten close a few times. <laughs> close, but no cigar. You ready? Sure. Ten days after the war ended, my sister Laura drove a car off a bridge. My sister Laura. Ten days after the war ended. Second sentence, please. I haven't got a clue. The bridge was being repaired. She went right through the danger sign. Oh, boy. I really suck at this game. 
<laughs> Sounds like a fascinating novel. I, I want to read it someday. <laughs> Third sentence. I would say fascinating is the adjective for this novel. And Canadian. 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 Oh, okay. Give me one more sentence and I might try a guess. The car fell 100 feet into the ravine, smashing through the treetops, feathery with new leaves, then burst into flames and rolled down into the shallow, shallow creek at the bottom. Well, this is just a complete stab in the dark, which hasn't worked for me so far in this game, but I'm going to try it one more time because it's all I got. The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood. Well, oh, okay, well, it did kind of vaguely sound familiar, but I, I have no memory of Laura or the sister dying. I have no memory of that, but I love that novel and I read it, oh my God, 1995 maybe? <laughs> I think we've picked a little bit too far in the past. Well, that's because when you're doing it with an old geezer like me, <laughs> I picked stuff from your past, but your your past is much more closer to the present than mine. But yeah. Yeah, okay, I, I think I, one of the books he picked was probably 30 years ago when he did us, because he picked one when I was a kid. Have you read um, The Blind Assassin? I have, yes. I have too. Yeah. You, you liked it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's so long ago that I remember almost nothing about it, but I think at that time it was the f- best of hers I'd read. So I, I like that one. What I love of Margaret Atwood's is Cat's Eye. Ooh, Ooh I haven't I read, read that read one Cat's yet. That's the Blind Assassin was my favourite until I read Alias Grace. What was your favourite? Blind Assassin was your favourite? Yeah. I haven't read Alias Grace. I must try that one. Ooh. So yeah. this was fun, guys. I'm not nearly as good at this challenge as you are. <laughs> um, I had a blast. So I think we need to uh, we need to come up with a new game next time. Any ideas? Something involving redemption. Strip redemption. Strip redemption. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on the concept. 